Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go over chapter six, where we're going to delve in more, more in depth into looking at cash and working capital management. In any business, cash is king. So this is really important. Um, in fact, we're going to break um, cash flow management into two chapters. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at the overall management. And in the next chapter, we're going to look into forecasting. So let's take a look next into what we will go over today. In this chapter, we're going to go over in very detail um, how cash management work. And that means um, step by step on how a business will operate um, and collect cash from the customers. Uh, one important aspect is credit card uh, because most of the time uh, credit cards is the major method of payment nowadays. Um, in addition to that, we'll talk about how to manage accounts receivables, inventory, accounts payable, and then um, look at the operating cycle and the cash conversion cycle. So what a few definition, what do we mean by working capital? Working capital is the amount of asset that you put into work um, on a short term basis. So that includes current asset. Um, so current assets are defined as assets that will get converted into cash within one year and also current liabilities, which are debt that the company has to pay up within one year. The term networking capital is defined as current asset minus current liability. And this definition is going to come in handy throughout this and then fo uh, following chapters. So when we talk about current asset and uh, uh, managing current asset, um, there are a few items that uh, we want to uh, focus on. One is um, cash management. Um, this you can apply to both a business and your personal finance. So cash management you, will involve choosing a bank. Um, and also um, the second is credit card management. Um, I will not go into uh, depth about credit, credit card processing in this um, um, video. Please see the textbook for details because there are actually a lot of things to consider when you um, when you are choosing a credit card processing company. Um, in fact, um, as we mentioned in the last chapter, um, some financing such as Merchant Cash Advance and also um, some payment provider, uh, they wrap financing and credit card processing into one package. So it's really important. The main consideration that you want to take into account when choosing credit card processing are the cost versus the convenience. Um, in addition to cash management, the other uh, main aspect of current asset management is accounts receivables. Um, depending on the size of your business, you may or may not have a large amount of accounts receivables. Uh, a small business typically start with uh, using credit card rather than extending credits directly to their customers. So when you have accounts receivable, that means you are selling um, products or services to your customers and then letting them pay you later, thereby creating an accounts receivable. So the most important thing about accounts receivable for a small business is be diligent about sending out invoicing and also continuously monitor your customer's payment. Uh, this is actually um, may sound um, far-fetched, but it's actually the reality is that a lot of business owners, especially entrepreneurs in a small business, they're focused in, in providing the service and products to their customers. And sometimes they are not diligent in sending out invoices and collecting cash from their customers. Uh, a very helpful report in managing accounts receivables is called the aging report. In, and the textbook has an example of this report. It shows how much each customer owe you and how long they have owe you. So um, it, the best way to, to manage accounts receivable if you are not factoring, meaning you're not selling your accounts receivables to, to an outside party, is to put it on your calendar and make it a weekly process that you um, send out invoices and you call your customers to collect cash from them on a regular basis. The last item on um, current asset is managing inventory. Uh, managing inventory is a particular challenging um, task for entrepreneurs um, 
if your business involves goods. Um, so there are we're gonna go into an example in a little bit um, to look at different inventory management system. So before we go into that, um, it's important to th is distinguish the um, inventory method, which is uh, a method of managing and um, keeping track of how much inventory in terms of quantity do you have on hand. Uh, and two, the two methods are perpetual inventory method versus a periodic inventory method. These two methods distinguishes counting of inventory. So counting how many pieces of each items do you have on hand. Another aspect of inventory management is valuing your inventory. So the inventory valuation method, this has to do with figuring out how much um, inventory in terms of dollar value do you have on hand. Um, the common methods are FIFO, which is first in, first out, or LIFO, last in, first out, average cost or specific identification. The inventory valuation method has an impact on um, the income tax for uh, the business. So this is, so valuation has more of a tax impact. Quantity um, management um, is important for you to make sure that uh, to control for spoilage or theft uh, on, and making sure that you have sufficient quantity on hand to meet customer demand. And then lastly, uh, when you talk about theft and spoilage, um, that is infantry control. A common method for inventory control is an ABC method. An ABC method um, separates your inventory into category A, B, and C. And uh, A will be all the items that you use a lot. All items have a very high value. So obviously those you want to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, B are the intermediate items. And then C will be items that either has very low value uh, or is infrequent. So if you think about, for example, um, a restaurant, um, then the say amount of um, drinking straws may be a C item because you may use quite a bit of it, but not too, too much. And the per unit uh, cost is very low. So uh, versus uh, liquor is oftentimes an A item because the cost is high and the, the restaurant will use a lot of it. So separating your inventory into the ABC category will help you focus your effort. There is another video following this one during which I will go over step-by-step step how to construct an inventory worksheet uh, using the spreadsheet template. So after this video, uh, please download the template before you go on to the next video. To continue about current asset management, we're going to, now that you have a good understanding of current asset, let's take a look at current liability. Current liability includes accounts payable and the one thing that you want to keep in, in mind of accounts payable is that um, a lot of suppliers offer cash discounts and that's cash discounts is actually really valuable. Um, it is oftentimes um, much cheaper to borrow money from a bank so that you have the cash on hand to take advantage of these cash discounts. A particularly useful tool is to use a line of credit because um, you only pay interest on the line of credit on cash that you took out as loan. Um, otherwise, you do not have to pay um, interest on mon uh, if you do not need to use the line of credit. So you will not be caught. If you have a line of credit, then you will not have to miss out on cash discounts um, because of cash flow problem. And having a cash budget will greatly help with your planning. Uh, and that it, the cash budget will be the focus in the next chapter. Another part of current liability is the current portion of long-term debt. So especially if you have a mortgage that has a balloon payment that is coming due, those are things that you want to take into account. So in general, when we manage current asset and current liability, uh, we are balancing risk versus cost. So the more cash you keep on hand, um, the lower the risk, but the higher the cost because of, there is an opportunity cost to keep cash on hand. Um, so that uh, things such as line of credit uh, is a uh, is a is a cost effective option to reduce the risk of running out of money and not having to pay interest uh, when you don't need it. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the cash conversion cycle. This will highlight the cost of financing um, working capital. So the cost co cash conversion cycle is defined as days sales and inventory plus the average collection period minus the accounts payable period. So if you think about the operation of a business, days sales and inventory is how long your uh, product sits on the sh shelf before you sell it to a customer. Collection period is how long it takes after you make the sales before you collect cash from the customer. And subtract from that accounts payable period because you have some leeway from your supplier if you are able to buy in credit so you don't have to pay your supplier right away. So a cash conversion cycle represents when cash has to come out of your company to your supplier till you collect cash back from your customers. So the amount of cost of goods sold that you carry that need to be financed is equal to your cost of goods sold per day times the number of days in your conversion cycle. So that's how much you're carrying uh, your financing in order to have goods so that you can sell to your customer. And the financing cost depends on your borrowing rate. So uh, this is the, the dollar amount is the cost of goods sold that is financing times your borrowing rate per day. That is your financing cost for the cash cycle. So managing your working capital and your cash conversion cycle is basically a cost benefit analysis. So the benefit is saving money. So in one way, you can shorten your cash conversion cycle and that can save your financing cost. Um, how do you um, shorten your cash cycle? You can reduce your day's sales and inventory, for example. Uh, but the, that comes with a cost. The cost is that if you carry too little inventory, you may run out and end up losing sales. So those are the things that we need to take into account. Let's take a look at a quick example. Here are the financial ratios that you computed in the last chapter. So we have days sales in inventory. So in this particular company, it takes them 11.87, so about 12 days to sell their inventory. And they have an average collection period of 14.9, so about 15 days, and an accounts payable period um, of 9.68 days. So we can compute the cash conversion cycle. Remember, the cash conversion cycle is uh, day sales and inventory plus the correct average collection period minus the accounts payable period. So in this particular uh, company, the cash conversion cycle is approximately 17 days. This concludes our discussion of Chapter 6. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go over step-by-step uh, step how to compute um, the inventory value using Excel. See you there soon.